You shall know the truth and the person of the truth shall make you free. We rebuke religion in this place. We rebuke ignorance in this place. We decree freedom reigns in this house. Freedom looks good on us. We are dressed in righteousness. Freedom looks good on us. We are no longer bound. We decree by the preaching of the gospel, by the singing of the gospel, addictions are broken. Ignorance is taken out of the way. Light shines in the darkness and the darkness comprehends it not. The truth makes us truly free. In reality, we are free. I begin to pray that the word of his grace will indeed build you up, will indeed edify you, that from the singing of the gospel to the preaching of the gospel, the power is dispensed. Power in your pain, a message in every mess to bring you out of every misery that you may be experiencing physically, mentally, emotionally, that the word of his grace will build you up. Decree healing for your body. Refuse to leave this service with that pain, with that disease. Disease is a sign of this ease. I decree ease over you right now. Put my first game scripture on screen now. Karamala rose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of that meat 40 days and 40 nights unto Horeb the mount of God one meal took Elijah for 40 days I decree over you the word of his grace is able to build you up just feeding on the word of his grace in this service he's able to carry you beyond this week he's able to carry you beyond this week that when you're faced with a storm, a trial, a tribulation, a circumstance, that war will carry you. You will be literally able to walk on water. Because walking on water is walking on the word of God. Walk you with carry Elijah for 40 days. I prophesy over you. The word of his grace in this service will carry you from beyond this way.
Thank you because the entrance of your word brings light. We decree from the praise and worship even on to the post-service prayer that your power is tangible in this meeting. I refuse for anybody to go back the same way they came. I decree that you are saturated with the revelation of Jesus Christ and you are unveiled like never before. I decree healing is in this place. Healing for emotional trauma. Healing for your bodies. I decree restoration like never before in the matchless name of Jesus. I decree glad tidings everywhere you go. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. I didn't hear an amen. Let's make that declaration together. Want to go. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am the redeemed of the Lord. I am the beloved of Abba. All my sins are forgiven. I am passionately loved by God. I am powerfully held by God. I am kept and protected by God. I am joy in God's assistance. I am irrevocably blessed. I am eternally forgiven. I am the healed of the Lord. I enjoy divine help. I have the favor and the wisdom of God. I am fruitful. I flourish, excel, and prosper in all that I do. I have the multipliers anointing. Nothing is against me. Nothing dies in my hands. I am never stranded. The supernatural is natural to me. All things are now working together for my good. God loves me more than the devil hates me. Spirit loves me. Walking for me. Glory. Now with Jesus Christ, please. Take walk of the ministry of love. God has been good to you. Can I hear you scream? One more time, if God has been good to you, can I hear you scream? Just jam your hands together this morning. Put your hands together, come on. Yeah. Our God is great and greatly to be praised. He deserves every praise and every worship. When you jam your hands together this morning, I should give God praise this morning. You won't know the song. Listen. Lord, you worthy.
everyone lift your hands. Say I love you. 
your hands, Logic Nation, and give the Lord a shout this morning. Hallelujah. Please, you may have your seat this morning. This morning, I feel strongly there's, there's something that's heavy in this atmosphere that speaks about the love of God. That's what we want to share with you this morning. If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, Hallelujah. You waited. God bless you. Hallelujah. You came out your way. You stepped down to speak till. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
Fantastic praise and worship line up and your ministration. Hold your neighbor to your left and to your right. Spirit of God, we thank you. This time is your hour. This is your moment. Thank you for your word as it comes. We are changed into the very image that we are in Christ. To this intent, we decree every kneel bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. In Jesus' name, and everyone said amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Welcome to first service, second service starts at 10, third service, 12, 30 p.m. Welcome all our online viewers to, to first service. I hope one day you find your way to church and you're in church, still looking at the logic church one eye. Should I join and should I not join? This is the word. This is your final word from God. Come to church. This is the, door says the you lady sitting on the couch looking at me. You're in Lekki, you're in Via, in Kui. You've been saying, should I come? This is the word of the Lord to you. Come to church. That's it. And the church said, amen. 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 Can't see they've taken light at home now. Come to church. <laughs> okay. You think I'm playing until you hear the person's testimony. That as he said, they took light. <laughs> uh, all right. Midweek service holds here every, every Wednesday for 6 p.m. And I want you to be part of it as we continue the series I'm starting today on Wednesday. Glory to God. Welcome all our viewers from Cotonou Campus. Your pastor is here today, Pastor Matthew Myro. <laughs> from Ekregene. Welcome to church this morning. Osofo is here for you. And U.S. Campus and every part of the world. LFC starts tomorrow if you're in this church. You have not done LFC. I don't want to say lift up your hands. I, I will not, not come and disgrace you on Sunday morning. Some of you are looking away right now. It's you I'm talking to. Wendy, good morning, man. Good morning, yeah. So let me check. <laughs> Ishok, say good morning, sir. All of you that have not done LFC in this church, Logic Foundation class, see, be here tomorrow. Join the class. It will help you understand what we teach every Sunday in and Sunday out, Wednesday in and Wednesday out. Is that you? Oh, good to see you. Um, it will help you more. And I'm teaching the class tomorrow. So you want to... You did not know before. Say, ah, before I used to teach it. <laughs> so <laughs> I teach in the class tomorrow. So all those your members that have not done LFC, those who have done LFC, make them know that they have to be there tomorrow. Can I hear your noise now? Yes, be there tomorrow. And then LDC starts at the end of this month. We'll do logic discipleship class. Please. Clear your calendar. 20. Some of you, you know, when you make an announcement in church, Pastor Bena, people are looking at you like this. They are not hearing anything, no. Because after the end of the year, hey, when is the conference again? I'm like, ah, ah. every Sunday for the last two months. I could say, hey, people, please remind me again. When is the conference again? I will just take a deep breath. People, calm down. 29th of May to 2nd of June. <laughs> The next week, and people, I'm sorry, I know you told me before, I'm like, no, it's 29th of May. Dr. Creflo is coming with his full team. Um, the flyer is the first flyer. Oh, Cabo Sha. Shedebeke la Bahata. God punished the devil. You, you, you see, you, wait. See, what will, you, what will you tell your children in the future that you did not make it? Tell me. 
the last day when I was not around, do you think they'll be proud of you? Eh? So, and you, you have to be there. And so do not just come bring somebody along. Wednesday evening, Thursday evening, Friday morning, Friday evening, double dose. Ah, then Saturday morning, every, see, you don't miss every day. There's one, you cannot, don't choose the day Dr. Graver is coming. Don't do it yourself. The, the people who are preaching Wednesday, they are not trying to clear the ground. No, 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 no. no every service is, is <laughs> okay, please. All right. Glory to God. So, and please keep giving towards it. You know this thing as, as you are shouting there like that. <laughs> I've been discussing with um, Aurea Deleke and some folks on this thing. <laughs> so we want you to give towards it. Yeah? And we want you to really give towards it. It's not convenient for us, but it's expedient for us. Did you hear what I said? It's not convenient for us, but it's expedient for us. And some of you have already given, but I'm saying give again because it's a loud statement. What we're saying, listen to me. Let me try and explain to you. You know, you know how those guys who don't preach the gospel go all out for what they do. Are you understanding what I'm saying? This is the gospel. Let's go all out for the gospel. Let's, let's show them that the gospel doesn't mean that but because if something is that is not gospel, you, you will see the heavy line up. But this is important for us. I think I've said enough. I need you to give towards it. Just keep giving towards it. God bless you as you do in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen. amen. <laughs> the birthday list is long. Welcome to a bread. Top match or something. Happy birthday to Festus. Okay, good. Our manager, where are you? Can you wave? Happy birthday to Festus. Joy Amanze, where are you? Joy Amanze, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Lillian Unuiboje. Just keep clapping, it's a long list. Lillian Unuiboje. Happy birthday to Mr. Uncle Sheriff Lawal. I'm sure we'll be here for second service. Mrs. Osasu Adedeji. Uh uh. On fond of precious, my own lovely precious. Happy birthday to you, baby girl. Happy birthday to our sound engineer, Manny Stevens. Please clap for us that the sound will be good, okay? Amen. <laughs> Let me not talk. Happy birthday to the incredible minister Victor Paul MVP. Happy birthday to Moji Delano. Powerful list. All of you are very important to us as a church. God bless, increase you, cause his face to keep shining upon you. Your heavens remain open. Testimonies upon your life on the different note in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. I think I am done. If this is your first Sunday at the Logic Church, can you stand? Your first Sunday at the Logic Church, we want to welcome you. Oh, come on, come on. Stretch your hands for me. Shake him for me, please. Shake him for me. Shake that brother for me. Come on. Shake that brother for me. Somebody shake that sister for me. The love of God in Christ, that's who we are. Shake that guy for me. Give him a hug for me if you can. Everyone keep going. Welcome them to church. We love you. The love of God in Christ, that's who we are. Welcome to the Logic Church. Love, life, and impact. Logic is an acronym for love of God in Christ. We have received this love vertically and his life vertically so that we can dispense it horizontally. I do not believe you're here by chance or happenstance. I strongly believe you're here by the divine summons of Elohim. As I can tell in your eyes, you're sick and tired of being sick and tired of religion. That's why God brought you here to hear this message of his grace. I do not want you to rush at the end of the service. One of our incredible leaders would like to share a word of fellowship with you just to keep you in touch with who we are as a church, what we do, what we believe in. And you can, it's not too early to join LFC tomorrow, you see. Not too early to just be integrated into the system of the church. And the truth is, you look like my members, I look like your pastor. So I'm asking myself, where have we been? So sit back, relax, and enjoy the rest of the service. God bless you. Church, can you clap one more time? Amen. Glory to God. New series, Alat, the blessing series starts this morning. The blessing series starts this morning. We continue on Wednesday and uh, next week, Sunday. And um, I ain't traveling anywhere anytime soon. Sure. Um, with you, yeah. Um, <laughs> that's not good news to some churches, but it's fine. Genesis 22, 17 and 18. Find your Bibles. Let's stand to our feet as we read Genesis chapter 22, verse 17 and 18. Genesis chapter number 22, verse 17 and 18. Genesis chapter number 22, 
verse 17 and 18 genesis chapter number if you can't find genesis come to jesus quickly let's pray with you even if you have hard copies the first book in the bible <laughs> amen let's pray with you good to see every one of you now let's read together in concert at the count of three one two three go Next. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. So I want you to do somebody, do something for me. Look for that neighbor that doesn't feel blessed. And then I want you to deputize for me. And then if your neighbor feels blessed, maybe no, still preach to them too. And then tell them for me, you are truly blessed. You see, there, there's a neighbor behind you that is not, Look how the neighbor did. So find that neighbor for me that is doing like this. They know what pray for you. <laughs> pray for Gerard. So find the neighbor. Say you are truly blessed. Okay, okay. No, now. Tell your neighbor the blessing is not a feeling. So you may not feel blessed. Thank you, son. Say you may not feel blessed. You may not even look blessed, but the, you are truly blessed. No, I don't like that neighbor. Maybe you find another neighbor, like, like they're beefing Gerard here. Gerard, you may have to leave to the congregation. Has he, has he changed? Find another neighbor. Say, I am truly blessed. Say, neighbor, treat me carefully. Add some respect to the way you treat me. Because you're sitting behind or in front of a blessed man. And then shout glory. Amen. Father, thank you for your word. Send the kind of unction that makes teaching and preaching easy. Do your bidding in this room. Give your people understanding as you give me utterance. Give me nimbleness of man and I just thought. Let your name be glorified. Your people let the fight and the devil's terrified. In Jesus' matchless name and everybody said amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. As you sit, whisper to your neighbor, I am truly blessed. I didn't like the way you said it. Say, I'm truly blessed. Let me start this morning by saying that the Old Testament is the blessing promised. The New Testament, hmm, sorry, the Old Testament is the blessing promised. The transitional testament, which will be Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. If you're a student of the Bible in this church, you should know what I'm talking about. Is the blessing manifested. In the epistles, what you have is the blessing. Where did you go to without telling me? Is the blessing fulfilled. Let's do it again one more time. The Old Testament is the blessing promised. The transitional testament is the blessing manifested. In the epistles, what you have is the blessing fulfilled. Are you listening to me? I'm going somewhere with this. The Old Testament is the blessing promised. In the transitional testament, where you have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, is the blessing manifested. In the epistles, where you have a, a part of the book of Acts and then latest to the churches, is the blessing fulfilled. So it, it, that's why it doesn't make sense to say every part of the Bible is to you. No, no, no. Some, uh, <laughs> some are written to you. Some are written for you. The Old Testament is written for you. The New Testament, which is the epistles, are written to you. So when you say everything is for me, everything is for me, what you are saying is that you're going to live in a dispensation where they expected the blessing to show up and it did not show up. So the Old Testament, I repeat for emphasis, is that is the blessing promised. The New Testament, transitional testament, is the blessing appeared. In the epistles is the blessing fulfilled. Who has cash? Bring my bag. I think I have something by the side of my bag. Just so you understand um, what I'm talking about. Hold up a minute. No, no, side. I think I have something. Okay, another brother. Last money. So if I say to Gerald, I'm coming to see you, and when I come to see you, I have 
cash for you. What I just did to him, I promised him a blessing. You see? Now, when I now come to Gerard, haven't come to Gerard like this, Gerard is excited. Hey, Papa has shown up. He said he will give me something. Doesn't mean I've given him yet. It just means that the person who made the promise has showed up. Emmanuel, God with us. Now, when I give him the money, keep it, we use it for three services. Yeah. So, when I give him this and I leave, that is the blessing fulfilled. Because I can come to him, borrow me first. And we're just discussing, Jerry, I wish we and say, I'm fine. Then he brings the subject of the blessing and the person. Yeah, so we're saying, no, how service today? And he's waiting, saying, wow. You say when you come, you, have you ever met those uncles? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's not only my family. That's, I'm very comforted. When you, when, I'll buy you a bicycle. I have one. That still told me when I was in uni, like I said, uncle, stop it. <laughs> You'll be telling me this thing from small. So when I come and I drop what I have promised, that is the New Testament. That is the blessing word fulfilled. The whole of the Old Testament is God announcing to the church, the blessing is coming. The blessing is coming. The blessing is, are you listening to me? The blessing is coming. The blessing is coming. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and the word became flesh. And the blessing walked amongst men. But as much as he was the blessing walking amongst men, he couldn't be the blessing in men. So he could be a blessing one at a time. He could have been in the house of Peter and in the house of Andrew at the same time. So the blessing was limited. For except a kind of wheat fall on the ground and die, it abides alone. But when he died, resurrected, and released upon all of us, then the blessing fulfilled. So what that means is that the whole of the Old Testament, oh Jesus, this is so good. The whole of the Old Testament is the prophet announcing to us that the blessing is coming. Ooh. The whole of the Old Testament, you, you, what do you think Hebrew says? Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Faith is the blessing that they were hoping for because faith is a person. You don't know that? Faith is a person. Hebrews 11 verse 6. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Without Jesus, it's impossible to please God. Because, because the only way to... Oh, oh, first service. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Because the only way to please God is Jesus. Jesus is the only way, not one of the ways. The only, so it now says, without Jesus, it's impossible to please God. So faith is the Jesus that they hoped for. Faith is the blessing that they hoped for that they did not see. Hebrews 11 verse 6, without this Jesus, it's impossible to please God. So the whole of the Old Testament was the prophet announcing something is coming. The blessing is coming. God wants to do something. The agenda of God is loading. That's why all of them, even in Hebrews 11 verse 39 says, even all of these, they died without receiving the blessing. But they believed in the blessing to come. And, and it was counted to them as righteousness because the blessing was not going to come. So in their dispensation, what was important to them was believing in the blessing to come. What is important to us is the fulfillment of the blessing. So the Old Testament people, their faith is the blessing is? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. The blessing is? Epistles, where we fit into the blessing is fulfilled. So you can't be here talking like these guys over here. So when you start praying like this, God bless me. God bless me. God, will you do this? No. You are praying out of understanding. You are praying like Old Testament people, servants, no, so out of sync. You are praying amiss. How to pray right is, Father, thank you because I'm blessed. Thank you because it is done. And if you sense hindrance, devil, get out of the way. 
thank you because it is done oh when you are here start fighting hey father won't you bless me god is saying no i'm not about to bless you that is praying in this testament and we are not in are you, church is this too heavy for you we are not in this testament i love this first service you're getting it you are not in this testament so i'm not praying god would you bless me oh father open the heavens no when he died like this when he he opened the heavens over me so how do i pray here thank you lord because your heavens are opened over me thank you because the heavens are always open over me thank you because i'm already blessed in christ jesus thank you because i'm already healed in christ jesus thank you because i already have my baby thank you because the conference is already done thank you because the church is already done thank you because no weapon fashioned against me is able to prosper thank you because i have already received it and i'm just aligning because he has and everyone said amen are you seeing what i'm saying we can even close now i've done well i'm serious that's what the blessing is so i'm trying to show you how to live in the consciousness of this place because once you start living in that consciousness, the devil knows that you don't know who you are. It's like having a seminar and teach me as a man. And you know how to be a man. No, I'm not risky. You, you understand what I'm saying? I'm not at risk. And you understand what I'm saying? So the... the so do you understand telling a full-grown dr chino so hey dr chino so you are dr chino so you are a doctor you think that information is for him that information is likely for you you are, you are reminding yourself of who he of who he is hey. so some of the praise and worship we do is a reminder for us so God doesn't have amnesia. He's very sure of who he is. He's very aware. He now wrote 66 books to tell you that he's very aware. Does he need your reminder? Are you understanding what I'm saying? This is what Peter saw. This is what Peter saw. Don't miss Wednesday. Don't miss next week Sunday. Bring your friends. Because we do not know that we are blessed. And the, you know the Holy Ghost said to me that if the old saints show up in a New Testament church, See, if you tell them to exchange the way Elijah, Moses, Abraham, we switch. David, the way they will switch into your position. Because everything Victor, they talked about, they did not experience it. It was for us. Okay, first Peter. Sit, son, thank you. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently. Who prophesied of the grace that... Should, it, so, hi. so all the prophecies of the prophets was grace is coming. No, now. Are you seeing it there? That means if you want to look at the prophecy of the prophets properly, they were all shouting, grace is coming. Grace is coming. Now Peter tried, though. He had grown. Now Peter tried this guy. Peter tried. He had grown. It sounds like Paul. Yeah, he had read a lot from Paul. He, he tried. He tried. It says of the grace that should come unto you. That means the root of something that was coming unto you. It will, I use next verse. Searching what or what manner of time the spirit of Christ, I, which was in them, did in, wrong translation, which was on them. That's the slip in the translation. Which was on them, we know, so we can correct these things. Yeah? Which was on them. Don't I'm working on my translation. I'll release it when I'm 50. From now have eight more years to that juncture when he testified beforehand the sufferings of so what was released on them what was in the prophecy the testifying of the sufferings of christ and the glory that should follow so what was in the prophecy the sufferings of christ are you people hearing that means you see what these prophets of these days i don't understand them if the old testament prophesied about the sufferings of christ 
What should the New Testament prophet be prophesying? That he has suffered? Not to call phone number. Your father's house and you are here. I enter your room. There's a bed. To, which, what should be in my room? Kitchen. Bed should be in my room. I mean, your parlor now. There's a couch. What should be in the couch? In the parlor. Tree. Pot. Oh, 12, verse 12. It now says verse 12. Unto whom it was revealed, and that not unto themselves. Are you listening to me? That this revelation was not for them. But unto us, they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel. That means how do you accurately discover what they said? By the preaching of the gospel. Peter. That when you want to interpret the prophets is that you start preaching the gospel by the preaching of the gospel oh glory to god unto you with the holy spirit sent down from heaven which things angels desire to that means when we start this is the university of angels when we start teaching like these angels are taking notes uh -uh. What, what, what did they say there give me the next translation let me just lay foundation today tpt says this salvation was the focus hey So any prophet that did not talk about salvation lost focus. Leave him. This salvation was the focus of the prophets who prophesied of the outpouring of grace that was destined for Hi. When Peter now says you are a royal priesthood. You understand what he's saying? A peculiar people. That means when they look at the scheme of things that this it was destined for you. Ooh, they made a careful search, investigation, ayah, of the meaning of their God-given prophecies. That means when you want to investigate their prophecies, as they probed into the mysteries, hey, TPT self, they probed into the mysteries of who would fulfill them and the time period when it would all take place. The spirit of the anointed one was on them and was pointing prophetically to the sufferings that Christ was what? And the glories. Twelve. God punished the devil. Put it there. God revealed to the prophets that their ministry was not for their own, but for who? Okay. And now you have heard these things from the evangelist who preached what? To you. That means to unveil the mysteries of the Old Testament, you preach the gospel. In the Old Testament is mystery. In the Revelation is gospel. Oh. Through the power of the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. The gospel containing what? That even the angels long to what? Is mystery to the angels. Is revealed to us. Message. The prophets who told us this was coming asked a lot of questions. About the gift of life God was preparing. The Messiah spirit let them in on some of it. Not all of it. Some of it. That the Messiah would experience what? Followed by? Next verse. They clamored to know who and when. All they were told was they, they were serving you. That's what they told them. That It's not your business. You are serving this. Oh. And you are going back to the people who saved you. You are exalting the people who. Okay. These are not the days of Elijah. If you played it this morning, don't play it again. You who by orders from heaven. Orders from heaven. Orders from heaven. Have now heard for yourselves through the Holy Spirit. The message of those prophecies what? Prophecies what? Blessing what? Promises what? Next verse. Do you realize how fortunate you are? Angels will have given. Are you saying it? Are you saying it? Are you getting it? Let me show you Acts 3.18. Put it there. Acts 3.18. 
But those things which God before had showed by the mouth of what? No, no, no. You must put all there. It's important. Somebody say all his prophets. So what all the, if the combination of all the prophecies of the prophets, I, is what? That Jesus Christ should suffer and he hath so he had so what? The word fulfilled there is important. He had so what? Fulfilled. He's not about to fulfill it. He has done it. Okay. Bible study. I like this class. Let's, let's interrogate some of these prophets. Hmm? Oh, this is a long one. Jeremiah 31 verse 29. It will look like you are reading New Testament. I'm telling you, just watch. This is Jeremiah. This is what Jeremiah prophesied when Jesus had not died. The truth is that the writer of Hebrews went here and did copy and paste. I'm not playing. No. The writer of Hebrews went to this place, took copy and paste. So when he read it, he was like, uh uh. This thing this guy was talking about is not for them, it's for us. Copy, let's read it. In those days, they shall no more say, Their fathers have eaten sour grape, and the children's state are what? In those days, in that means there is a day coming. Are you understanding me? That a day is coming. Kabaye. A, a, something is coming. The blessing is coming. It now says, but everyone shall die for his own iniquity. Don't stress me. Every man that eateth the sour grape, his teeth shall be put on the edge. The son that sin it shall die. That's what he said. Next verse. Behold, the days come, said the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel, with the house of Judah. Next verse. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand of, and bring them out of the land of Egypt. With my covenant they break. Listen to me. Although I was, in, I was a husband unto them, said the Lord. Next verse. But this shall be the covenant I will make to the, with the house of Israel. After those days, said the Lord, I will put my law in their word. This is, this is Old Testament prophet too. He doesn't even know what he's saying. If he comes down to teach him, this is what you were actually saying. Yeah? And write it where? Yeah. I will be what? Yeah. And they shall be what? Yeah. Does it sound like New Testament? Next verse. And they shall teach no more wow. every man his neighbor and every man his brethren, saying, Know the Lord. For they shall all know me from the least of them to the what? Yeah. Said the Lord. For I will forgive and I will remember. That's what Hebrews is saying. I will be merciful to you and transgression. And your sins and iniquities will I remember no more. That's, that's Hebrews. That's Hebrews right there. So this prophet Jeremiah said this. Concerning something. 3240. Give me. Oh, take him back to Hebrews. Hebrews. You just gave me Hebrews 8. I love it. Leave it. One, two, three, go. Four, I'll be And your sins. I say, Baba copied and pasted the writer of Hebrews. He got to some port. He said, no, 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 no. Let's take the prophecies. It was written for us. It was, do you understand? This thing is written to us. Bring it for us and to us. Let's go to 32. Jeremiah 32 verse 40. Let's read together. One, two, three, go. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them that I will not turn away from them to do them good. I, 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 I. That means they will not. I will do this one. I will do this one. This is, this is prophets of the Old Testament. Are you seeing this? Let's go to 33, 14. 1, 2, 3, go. Let's read together. Behold, the days come, said the Lord, that I will perform that good thing. The days are coming that I will perform that good thing. That means that there's a good thing coming. Ezekiel 37, 26, Bible. Ezekiel 37, 26. Ezekiel 37, verse 26. Glory to God. One, two, three, go. Let's read. Moreover, I will make a new covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them. And I will place them and multiply them. And I will set my sanctuary in the midst of them. I will set my sanctuary in the midst of them. I will set my sanctuary in the midst of them. That means I'm going to dwell in them. That's what the prophet was saying. Because God was looking for a house. They tried. It was not working. Uh, build, build. Build. The Solomon tried. Okay. This one tried. Then one day Jesus came and said, destroy this temple. 
and I will build it up in three days. <laughs> Are you seeing clearly? Can you see it from the scriptures? So the blessing. First Corinthians 15, let me show you something. So even Paul, Paul writing the gospel, wrote from the prophecies of the... When we say the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed, the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. Another way you can say this is that the New Testament is the Old Testament fulfilled. First Corinthians 15. You know the scripture? Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you, you, uh, which also you have received. Wherein you start next verse. By which also you are saved, if you keep in memory uh, what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in the next verse. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I have received now that Christ died for. Keep this. Keep this. Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. That means this thing that I'm telling you, I saw it in the scripture. I saw it in the prophecies. I did not invent it. See, the message of the gospel doesn't need any invention. It's the same message. Don't try to be, don't want to do, no, don't cook anything new. It's the same. Yeah, serious. That means he saw it where? In the scriptures. Next, let me show you something. And that, and that he was buried and that he rose again according to what? So where did, where did Paul see this in the scriptures? I, I can show you a couple of them. Jonah 2, 10. And the Lord spake unto the fish and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry ground. I showed you last week that they asked Jesus for a sign. He said the only sign I will give to you is the sign of Jonah. As the, Jonah was in the belly of the fish. So the prophet looked at Jonah's mistake. And made the message out of Jonah's mistake. And said this guy was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. So shall the son of man be. So Paul read Jonah and said. Ah, 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 ah. According to the scriptures. Uh, Hosea chapter 6. 1 to 2. He says come let us return unto the Lord. For he had torn. And he will heal us. He had smitten. He had smitten. He had smitten. And he what? Let's read verse 2 together. 1, 2, 3, go. After two days, he will revive us. And the third day, Old Testament prophet was writing about death, burial, and resurrection. So Paul must have read this in the Old Testament to say, Look, what, what are you talking about here? Oh, wow, wow, wow. Because the whole Bible is one book. It's about Jesus, his death, his burial, and resurrection. Are you listening to me? So the Old Testament is the blessing promised. Transitional Testament, the blessing manifested. The epistles, the blessing what? Breaking news. The blessing is not cars. It's not houses. It's not money. This will be disappointing to a lot of people. And I'm so sorry. So, so The blessing is not cars. It's not houses. It's not billion flow. If it was that, Dangote is more blessed than you. All the unbelievers in Silicon Valley who don't even believe that there is God. You can't even, when you mention Jesus, they say, who's Jesus? Who's that? Who that? Jesus? Really? Oh, Jesus? No, I don't know Jesus. That means they are more blessed. Those people, if they tight, the tight of their tight of their tight. <laughs> oh, beautiful church. The and we'll buy everybody on that road. Call it logic drive. <laughs> if they tight the tent of their tent of their tent of their tent and you convert it. So if you now say the, the blessing of God kabaye, is finance, is the car. That's why we don't do those testimonies I bought in your car. Well, I dedicate your car, pray over your car, but that's not our testimony here. And doesn't mean that God is not blessing us though. I knew what you were driving when we started church. I go to the car park. My church is there. Amen. Amen. Our church building is at the car park. There's a car I saw. That's my conference money. The full conference money. Somebody drove you to church one Sunday morning. May I or not burn your shirt? If you, if you are here, you're not giving to me. My full conference money is there. Is there. So I know evidence day. You were staying in Lagbaja. Now you are staying in Ikoi. You are buying buildings. You are, I can tell, but that's not the blessing. If that is the blessing, then we are then, we're, then there's a big problem with our faith. 
then the rich have no business being saved. Then the rich have no business being saved. If the blessing is cars, houses, hairdo, then the rich person, you have nothing to give to him. The blessing is not tangible. The blessing is eternal. Yes, Jesus did not come to give you cars and houses. That's so mundane. This prosperity gospel has to stop. Jesus came to give us life. Those are just extra add-ons. Thank you. He came to give us life. That is why you don't believe you are blessed. Yes. Because you think until you have the children, you have the cars, you have the houses. That's when your mind starts telling you, I am now blessed. That's why salvation is not enough for the average believer. Because we, we want something else plus the salvation. So when you say you are saved, that's big deal. It's not really big deal to us. This brother just got saved. Hey, yeah. This brother just made a billion dollars. Wow. Our God is powerful. So his soul is not as important to us because of the prosperity gospel that has brainwashed the church to error. And we are standing to preach this gospel of Jesus Christ. I may not be popular. I may not have all the money. But I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. For the preaching of the cross is foolishness to them that perish. But unto us who are saved it is the power of God. I commend you now to God under the word of his grace. That is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among the saints. This is the message of the gospel. Jesus was promised to the Old Testament Jesus showed up in Matthew Mark Luke John in their pieces to all who believe Jesus lives inside of you what is the blessing you are saved in him you live in him you move in him you have your being Christ in you now is the hope of glory what is the blessing you carry the Holy Spirit inside of you heaven is his PMB you are the PO box as he is so are you in this world as your moving is heaven moving on earth everything you move is heaven moving on earth you carry Jesus inside of you now demons tremble at your presence what a mighty son you are glory glory hallelujah everything written about you is fulfilled your seat we're just talking see, see, see. Fulfilled. Fulfilled. that's the blessing that's the blessing. Sorry, you feel very bad, but that's the blessing. That's just the blessing. So that's the blessing. So when you tell a believer you're blessed, it starts looking like this. Hey, there's the blessing. There's the blessing. Ah, now them, them no so and cool now. Me, bless. You don't, now I'll tell you my mind. <laughs> Because I'm not telling you. <laughs> you are blessed. The bank, yeah. Bank is chasing you. You are still blessed. Salaries to pay. You are still blessed. That's what differentiates you and the person who's not blessed. When they go through a storm, they feel like killing themselves. You go through storm, it's like small potatoes. It's like small potatoes. I was one, one of the intercessors who was privy to hear some of the things we've been dealing with. So she saw me in London and said, Happy flow. Chiamasi. When I hear of the things that we are dealing with, and you're preaching Sunday more preaching powerful, that I'm encouraged to now take up my business to another level. One of my pastors, Pastor Philip, we had one meeting on, on Tuesday, and I just opened up some of the things. He said, and you preached on Sunday? Three times, we almost laughed. Because he was so shocked, like, no, you can't. That's what blessing is. It's like, you know how to take a licking and keep on ticking. You hear bad news and keep a good attitude. Be through storms and still have your shout and your dance. Wake up in the morning and you don't smell like what you've been through. Like Bedrock, Shek, Shedrock, Meshach and the bad negro who went through the fire and didn't smell smoke. That's how you know you're blessed. That's how you know you're blessed. When you keep checking out, you no, 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 you don't understand blessing. It makes you tough. Because you know something that everybody doesn't know. You know something that everybody doesn't know. You, you, you don't cower. No, you're strong. In the face of adversity, you're still moving tall. Why? You understand you're moving in the consciousness of the blessing. David did not feel blessed. No, David didn't feel blessed. What was his job? 
to be in the backside taking care of the fathership that 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 does not feel blessed you, do you know how not feeling blessed is that a prophet came to your house asked for all your father's children they removed you. even your father would have even remembered you they, there was no step brother or cousin or brother say ah no david no it was when the oil refused to pour that's the thing about the blessing you can deceive the prophet you can't deceive the blessing oh. that means you can deceive me oh that i will see you and say ah this guy and i lay hands on you doesn't mean the blessing will flow you you know so he, when david saw earlier he said surely this is the lord's anointed when he see a be a thousand shall fall at your side ten thousand we're tall say uh uh wait till they look for you again past this that's how some of you choose your partners you don't look for the blessing if you can't say amen say ouch you don't look for the blessing that's how some of you just look for size and don't you figure that after sex there's nothing she has to offer then you will know that jungle don't match up that after money because some guys are so broke all they have is money some women are so empty all they have is beauty that's when you you find the blessing ah may you find it too may you, may you, i'm telling you may you find it have you seen david cv have you seen david CV? first first samuel 16 18 i think first samuel 16 18 put it up there i i think so if my, if my theology is right first samuel whoosh. And answered because some of you asked for um, um, Proverbs 31 woman, but a lot of women don't know what to ask from a man. So, men, you're in trouble, put you under pressure. That's the scripture. It says, And he answered one of the servants and said, Behold, I have seen the son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite. He's corny in plain. That means he's a, he's a gifted person. Do you understand what I'm saying? And a mighty, valiant man. He's not a weak guy, he's strong, he's not lazy. 11 o'clock, um, it's going to be, it's going to be. It's not going to be until you make it be. You're just a privileged child. You have mommy and daddy to run to, that's why. Keep living, jungle go match us soon. Yes, I'm talking to you. <laughs> the car you drive, you got it from home. Because they do it a lot in the side of town. The parents just take, they, they start packaging you. Till old age, they're still packaging you. Then your wife will not be saying so honey let's do this mm, mm. continue continue he now says a man of war is a is a praying man praying man he says a pr is prudent in matters that means when you bring him he has sense he's a comely person that means he looks good he knows how to put it together no i don't care what you have you can look good stop smelling oh, come on man Shave the forest. Deal with be look good. Do you want to do braids? Fix yourself. He, he, he calmly person. The most important thing that Pastor Liam is the Lord is with him. That's the blessing. The Lord is with him. That should be your CV. That's the advantage. All of those things he said are very beautiful. But hey, this guy, apart from all these things. The, the Lord, the Lord is with him. That if you fight him, you actually can't win. I've seen the trajectory of his life. There is something on. I was in London when somebody was advising another person. Say, please, there's that, that guy called Fraser. You people are fighting, no? Please, oh, I've watched him for a while. There's something on his life, oh, Oga. Please back off from this guy. That he's not your regular guy. Yo. I was not even in the conversation. He sent a strong to a strong cabalo. That, that guy that you are fighting. Have you, you seen that there, there's the trajectory of his life? He's in back, not really the touch ground. So you must look at the person. The Lord is with him. Very important. So the blessing is not what money can buy. Peter speaking, he said, the, Your money perish with you. Talking about Simeon, right? But he had grown, so God saved Simeon. If it was Acts chapter 5, now he killed Ananias and Zafira for they have killed Simeon like this. In your look, you guys say, Your money perish with you. That was even good. Or else you die now. <laughs> you know, if Ananias and Zafira had lied to Jesus, they would not have died. Mm, they would not have died, yeah. 
No, it was Peter who killed them. Stop putting it on the Holy Ghost. The, the same Peter that denied Jesus three times. Jesus not kill him. Lie, where they lie? God, they forgive people. He reached out on Peter. Keep us. So, watch this. I'm about to say something really powerful. If the blessing is salvation, so the cause is the rejection of salvation. <laughs> so you can't break this cause. Oh, you didn't hear me? This is not the cause that you can break. If the blessing, the true blessing is salvation, that means the cause cannot be broken. You teach people out of the cause. It's called aphesis. Aphesis is for emphasis. You see, somewhere preaching yesterday, I had the privilege of preaching to a crowd of people yesterday in very religious four corners of the earth. It was a wedding ceremony. It gave me time to preach. My God. My God. They fair part me. So you have a Yoruba interpreter. I said, no problem. Put him there. <laughs> so I was going. The gospel. Die salvation. So I said for emphasis. All your sins have been forgiven. Because that is what engineers the curse. Hey. Everything isn't okay. Women, you know, when you, a woman's bag, a lot of things are inside. <laughs> In the bag called forgiveness of sins, there's curse, there's poverty, there's delay, there's everything. So when God says all your sins are forgiven, every other thing follows. Oh, if you read the book of John, I think it's in John 20, when the Bible says, anybody sin, you forgive shall be forgiven. That's where our brothers found, go to meet priests to ask for forgiveness of sins. They don't understand what Jesus was saying. Jesus is saying, go and evangelize. As you evangelize and preach the gospel to them, their sins are forgiven. John 20, 23. Whosoever, he says, whosoever sins, come from verse 21. Uh, let from the door. And Jesus said unto them again, peace be unto you. And as my father has sent me, even so I send you. Next verse. And when he said this, he breathed on them. And said unto them, receive the, that's born again experience. Receive the Holy Ghost. Next verse. Whosoever sins you remit, they are remitted. And unto them. And whosoever sins you retain, they are what? Keep. So people now think that what Jesus is saying here is, if the priest does not forgive you, you are not forgiven. Confession. Confession. If the priest says you are forgiven, until COVID happened. There was suspension of forgiveness. When the sin come pipe, pipe, Pope can say, ask God forgiveness from your house. If it is truth, pandemic can't change it. Because one plus one did not become 1.1 1 .1 during pandemic. So that should tell you that this thing, you get a leg. <laughs> okay. Let's read the TPT 21 to 23. 21 to 2. Jesus repeated his greetings. Peace to you. And he told them, just as the Father has sent me, I am now. Some of you, I don't know that I'm sent by God. You are sent by God. Jesus sent you to preach the gospel. He said, I don't know, you know, I'm no, no, no. You are sent by God. This is your sending message. Uh, God, have you called me? Yes, he has called you. Look at it. He's sending you to preach the gospel. Next verse. He now says, Then taking a deep breath, he blew on them and said, Receive the some of the things we do doing impactation. It's not because we, you know. Yes, leave it. 23. I send you to preach forgiveness of sins. That's what it means by anybody's sin, you forgive. I've sent you to preach forgiveness of sins, and people's sin will be for. But, but if you don't proclaim the forgiveness of their sins, they will remain. He was not talking about priestly confession. He was talking about preaching. That when you preach the gospel, their sins and forgiveness, uh, sins are forgiven. That's what brings them into the blessing. When they refuse, that's what keeps them in the curse. So a man can be in Ikoi, Banana Island, Rolls Royce, still in it. It's cursed. 
deliverance is preached is aphesis, forgiveness of sins. The rich man and Lazarus, one was blessed, the other one was cursed. Check Jesus' message, the Beatitudes. Blessed are they. Blessed. It's not blessed are the ones who have money. Blessed are the days. So the blessing was never tied to money at any point in the foundation of our faith. Are you listening to me? Was never. Was not transactional. Was inside. That means I can be going through hell and high waters, but I still have the blessing. I'm confident of the blessing. That's why I can still look up and say I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Yes, they chased me out of the job. I don't have a job right now, but I'm blessed. I'm ble That's what gives you assurance. Yes, single, but blessed. I don't want to be married with cost. You know, blessed. I, for all the jackpa and jackpa dance, no problem. What is on your life is more important than what is on the ground. You, yeah. Because if you have the blessing consciousness on the ground that is not productive, you will be blessed. But you can be in a ground that is very productive and you don't have the blessedness consciousness, you will be broke. That's when you jackpa, you can jackpa that. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Are you listening to me? Yes, That's the truth of the gospel. So what saves you is what I carry the consciousness of the blessing. Because there are people making it here in Nigeria. Yes. Well, big time. Than people who I'm not saying relocation is bad. If that's your own thing, that's where God is leading to. Please jump on it. Just go to London and go to Houston. We have a church there. Because what is destroying a lot of people when they relocate? There's no church family. Then you now know that this thing that you are enjoying every Wednesday and Sunday. You find out when you travel. You know when you see lion picking too much in the afternoon, you go call him pussy cat. Now see finish the world now. Now see finish. Travel. See the way they value me abroad, bros. Yeah, they don't see me finish now. Value me the eye for day. Travel until you go around four or five churches. You know, say, ah, ah. As the pastor is with you, you'll be correcting the pastor. I know more than this guy now. That's how you know that what you have here, what you call grass, is someone else's vegetable. The gospel the gospel so it's the forgiveness of sins preached that is what the blessing Isaiah 51 ah pastor Yemi God was showing us something Isaiah 51 verse 1 and 2 he says hearken unto me ye that follow righteousness he was talking to us prophet ah, no. oh, okay leave it we follow righteousness you know Isaiah is, Isaiah is an intelligent summary of the Bible Isaiah has 66 books the Bible has 66 books the Old Testament is 39 books. Isaiah chapter 1 to 39. Whoa, your father, your mother, whoa, go punish you. As Isaiah entered 40, come 40, come 40. Grace. That's how you see Isaiah. It's information for Bible students. If you don't like it, just let it go. No problem, it's fine. So okay. Hearken unto me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord, look unto the rock whence ye were hewn, and to the hole and the pit whence ye were digged. It can be dug, but they say dig there. Look unto Abraham your father. That father there doesn't mean Abraham is your, your pattern is the word there. Look to Abraham your pattern. And to Sarah that bore you pattern. I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. That means when I called him, this guy came from idolatry. And when God called him, he didn't do deliverance service for him. Okay. He came from idolatry, but the call was a deliverance. That means when God called him, no demon came with him. He came from Chaldeans. So even the 10% that he gave to Melchizedek is from idolatry. You. It's the pattern of when you travel, come back, you give something to the gods. Yes! It's, from, it's, it's an idolatry pattern. Well, let's leave that one before they fight me. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Even that 10% that he responded to Melchizedek, he, where did he get it from? The Holy Ghost? No! From idolatry. That's what they do when they come back from battle. They give a tent to the gods to say thank you. Now we all tight like this. One die like this. Pay tight. Abraham, pay tight. It's okay. Don't be angry. Just leave this part if you don't believe in it. Don't stress me. Don't ask. Send me DM. Go to the many part of the message. Fast forward. Just 
Skip, I'm talking to my people. Yeah, you see. You, you see, I'm a pastor to you and a teacher to you. I'm not a pastor to the people on Facebook and Twitter. So that's why what you put there is very important. I can talk to you, you will understand. If I spoke to them, they, they, fight. You're really blessed. So what, this thing you said, the pastor said to me, he came to church, third service a while ago and said to me, your people are really blessed. Bishop Mike also said that too. I said, why? He said, it's not that they have money. It's that this thing that they are hearing, I'm not sure they really know what this is. I now say yes, they don't know. Are you understanding what I'm saying? This is the blessing. So that's where Abraham got it from. That's the blessing. He says, I called him and I blessed him. That means I didn't do deliverance. Abraham, come. That's all. So the day man receives the blessing inside. Finish, you know. With the day man receives the blessing. You know the insult. The blessing and the blesser stays inside of you. With village people chasing both of you. Who do you like this now? Chasing both you and the blesser inside. This one, Abraham, the Holy Ghost was not in him. God just called him. You, the Holy Ghost jumped inside of you. But because you don't have a child yet, because you are not married yet, because you don't have a car yet, because that promotion has not come, the devil keeps telling you, you are not blessed. You to say, it's true. I'm not really blessed. How will you behave yourself? Look at your neighbor and say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Say it loud, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. See, if you don't know this consciousness of the blessing when you are broke, you won't know it too, at all. Though. This is the best time to practice the blessing. <laughs> That's how I've been able to move. Is that I was not born with a silver spoon. I just I saw the hand of God. That's all. When I was born, it was the hand of God feeding me. That's all. There was, there's no uncle. There's no uncle. There's not nothing. People, my friends have called me all over the world. Careful, dollar. How are you doing this? I was smile. Says the blessing. When the guy said the bill, I said, "Who me?" When I look at the bill, I start laughing at myself. I said, "But I know I'm blessed." And people like me make it in life. So we just keep working. How is it going to happen? I understand the blessings of God are motion sensitive. If you don't move, you won't see them. It's when you start moving that you see them. Because I understand the blessings of God. Tell anybody I'm really blessed. See, see, see. If you don't have this consciousness, even when you meet the destined man and woman for you, they will leave you easily. Because there's nothing different from the regular guy out there. There must be a consciousness that you have. Like there's something about this guy. This, that's the, the first thing my first CEO said, Unique Insurance, when I started working. There's something about this guy. I said, I know. I've always known. I've, I've, no, I'm blessed. I'm not your regular guy. I'm blessed. If, this guy is blessed. Then the ones who don't understand blessed, they say, man, I think he's just very elaborate. I say, you lack the lexicon to say anointed. T tell your neighbor I'm almost done say I'm blessed I can't deal with this today say it again I'm blessed so the blessing I follow come okay I'll, I'll say this and close hold up a minute what Jacob and Esau fought about I hope you know it's not money oh. hi okay I'll do this one and close we'll continue next week do you know what Jacob and Esau fought about is not land and houses Oh, the father was not dividing property. No. No, the blessing that they fought about was, it was just the speaking. And they know the value. So we, even when God has spoken to us, we don't know the value. We think he was joking. So they were not dividing land and houses, so. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So it wasn't that like Jacob and Jacob, Isaac now said, Jacob, two houses in Banana Island, my Range Rover, and my Rolls Royce, now belongs to you. Leave Camry for Esau. Leave, no, no. That, they, you, <laughs> you are not understanding me. <laughs> no. You see, we have, say it again. We, we have lost sight of this thing. I'm not playing. 
So I want you to, even if you are trekking home, trek with the blessing. Oh, are you, oh my God. I don't care where you are going, what you are going through. I am blessed. I am blessed. Have I buried people? Have you seen affliction like I have seen? You have no idea the kind of affliction I have seen. As your pastor, oh my God. Because I share in your affliction. You should have some die. I don't share in your joy because when it happens, it's low key. You, know? you don't tell me that one. <laughs> no, it's the truth. I'm telling you the truth. Is it when you when you hammer it was quiet you're lucky man man but once you think go pastor i'm not going to tell you come now please and you can meet god you know run the sister <laughs> yeah is it barriers is it going to an accident site where the people who can't even go and identify their loved ones who died in an accident is your job to go there as a pastor. If you go through what we go through as pastors, without understanding that you are blessed, you'll just be an unhappy man. Yes. Pastor Larry can remember one morning I did the service of songs. In the afternoon I did wedding. That same day in the evening I went for a burial. Three different emotions. That service of songs, I must mourn with those who mourn. But I cannot use that reggae to destroy the blues of the wedding ceremony. So come when the ceremony, my smiles. Love you. Say after me with this ring. <laughs> Pastor, it was so fantastic. The way you did the wedding. And as I get from enter the car, I'm going to do a burial. And when I get there, I see your, everyone crying. Then you mop your eyes and do the burial. The next morning, morning, Corona, grace and peace will multiply to you. Without knowing the blessing. Because you all think you're all the ones here, the ones that go through problem. That's the problem. But a true pastor, when you see him hug him tight, a true one that's doing the way we are doing like this, you have no idea. What keeps you going on is that when you're done, Father, thank you. Oh, so blessed. The gospel prevail. That's the one. The hog was more for him than for me. <laughs> Said this was my eye opening ceremony. That's the foil with which I drive. That thing is going to stay with me for a long time. That if it was just for him, his eyes to be open. I'm fine. I will sleep well tonight. <laughs> sleep very well tonight. This is the blessing. That's the blessing. Money can't buy that. Yes, yes, Money can't buy that. So what is what is struggled for? I gotta close. It's not. It's not cars and houses. No. They were struggling for Jesus. Where Jesus will come from? Oh, he got it now. Ah. They were struggling for which road Jesus will pass come. Whose loins? That was what the blessing was about. Because birthright is your ability to birth Christ. That's what birthright is. It's your ability to birth Christ. Oh, when God saw from the backside of eternity, Jacob I love, Esau I do not prefer. It's not hatred because there's no hatred in God. What he was saying is that this guy I already know that he's going to refuse me. So I don't like him. This one, I know he's going to accept me. So what they fought about was not cars and houses. What they fought about was who we give birth to Jesus. That was what the fight was about. It was not about no, 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 no. This thing they fought about lives inside of you. I want to flog some of you. And you say you are not blessed. This thing that they fought about is what you have. And you dare say 
that you are not blessed. You know, I was studying Hebrews chapter 12 with my people. Hebrews 11. How that everybody who messed up in the Old Testament, they edited their life in the, in the New Testament, Hebrews. Because the Old Testament is a fault-finding document. The New Testament is a faith-finding document. So Moses killed somebody and ran. They say Moses by faith forsook. I say how? how? When Moses they forsake, agreeing to suffer with the children. Which, what are you talking about? Sarah that laughed. He says Sarah by faith received Sarah by which he, what time? Which, which time? Romans want to offend me. Romans says he started not at the promises of God. Abraham that, that summer sorted. Abraham Stagger. Stagger is a decent way to go. He somersaulted, pregnant. He said, Stagger not at the promises of God. Because in the New Testament, when Jesus died for them, he edited their lives and gave them a new story. So, some of you, when you see Jesus, no, so my son, who never failed me, you will say, Jesus, now maybe this. Jesus. <laughs> You know why me, Jesus? So maybe if we start seeing ourselves in the version, the way God sees us, we'll start living in that version, the way God sees us. But for Esau, even in the New Testament, they drag him on the tweet on the on the on the on the streets of Hebrews, not Twitter. They added to his problem. Lest there be any fornicator or a profane person as Esau. Who for them? So, what he fought about was he rejected the right to bet Christ. Because Jesus will come from the first. Oh, next week I'll teach you the blessing of the first son. Don't worry. He was come from the first. So, guess what? He rejected. So, he moved from there to Jacob. Jacob became the first. And that is the law in Zasiah Jesus. So what they fought about was not was Jesus. That you and I now have free of charge. And you say you are not blessed. If Esau catch you. If Jacob catch you in the spirit. Say this thing when you say I the Obojo that I did to get it. The navigation. They break my hip joint the matter. You have it by believing. And because you've lost a loved one, because business has gone down, because you are believing of a baby, you just look, in your, look at yourself in the mirror and say, I am not blessed. I'm done. My text this morning, I'll continue tomorrow. I'll continue next. I'm done, man. Done. Done. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All this good and perfect comes from you. You are the heart of my contentment. that Jesus satisfies them. I want a church that Jesus satisfies them. I want a church that Jesus... My text, Genesis. Genesis, we read it. Media, give me my text. In blessing, I will bless thee. And 
and in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the sea. Oh! Woo! Ah, God. Perez, when he spoke to him first about the blessing in Genesis, Keep my scripture 12. He was Abram and said to him, I will bless you. I'll bless those that bless you and I curse those that curse you. When he became Abraham, he said to him, You have two descendants here. There are those in the heavens, there are those seashore, still Adam. But I'm going to bless your seed. What he now says, he says this to, to differentiate both, gen, both gen, our brothers. They call them our brothers. They're really not our brothers. That Abraham's mistake. 20, 18 is my text and I'll close. In thy seed. Not seeds. In thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast believed in thy seed that means this blessing I'm talking about is not in a seed is in thy seed Isaac was a seed Jesus is the seed so the child that God promised Abraham was not Isaac was Jesus so he was saying, the blessing is in that seed. If anybody aligns with that seed, Galatians 3 verse 16. Now to Abraham and his seed where the promises made, the blessing was made. He said not to seeds as of many, but as of one to thy seed. Jesus Christ. And if any man is in Christ, then all the blessings of God are in Christ. Yes. Amen. I'm done with you guys this morning. Let's give to the Lord. I hope with these few words of mine, I've been able to convince you and not confuse you that you are blessed. That anointing you sense inside your spirit is powerful. That's the Holy Ghost. You're really blessed. See men tearing up in service. You think this is a joke? That is the blessing of God. It's nothing tangible. It's supernatural. So when, I, it's tough for everybody, friends. It's tough for everybody. Don't own your toughness as if, no, no, no. It's tough for everybody. It's blasting everybody. But guess what? What it makes you different? That I have the blessing. Go back and fight again. You're blessed. Kill it as your word. Go back, fight for it. But now fight with the consciousness of not of your schemings and your skillfulness, but of the blessing. And the blessing will give me this. I'm not going to fight for this. God's blessing will bring this to me. Glory to God. I don't like the way you're clapping like I did a bad job. Or maybe you're still in awe. Hold the neighbor to your left and to your right. Hold the neighbor to your left and right. Squeeze the blessing into those hands. You're standing with somebody who the doctor has written off. You're holding somebody who may not even have what it takes to have lunch today. Somebody who's struggling with the bees. But squeeze the blessing into their hands. And tell, tell God, put, put blessing on my brother's hands. Put blessing on my sister's hands. What are you playing? Where's Brumen? Jesus. Come on, squeeze those hands. We squeeze miracles. 
we speak breakthrough we squeeze healing we squeeze deliverance testimonies on every side in the name of Jesus Satan be gone he whom the son has set for his friend I decree people move in the consciousness of the blessing they move in the consciousness of the blessing in the name of Jesus clap your hands now church give God praise clap your hands church give God praise if you know you are blessed not your neighbor if you know you are blessed like you truly know you are blessed don't stop clapping don't stop clapping and then shout thank you Jesus oh, yeah. let's give to the Lord father thank you for everyone who's giving this morning uh, ushers get the envelopes from from people let's give to the Lord this morning father thank you for everyone who's giving this morning that this is the least they would ever have when you multiply them they will not be small in the name of Jesus we give you glory Lord our King for testimonies on every side in Jesus much less name let the blessed of the Lord say amen, amen. come on I say let the blessed of the Lord say amen. amen one more time let the blessed of the Lord say amen, amen. speaking to people who I don't know your marriage may have crashed but your blessing is not tied to your spouse it's tied to the one who is Christ you are still blessed I don't know why I said that but I felt led to release that word Let's make our declarations that we can start second service. First timers, please do not rush at the end of the service. There's the first timers welcome for you. I will really bless you. Let's make our, were you blessed this morning? I want to check it. Let's have a blessed check. Were you blessed this morning? Smell your neighbor. Say, you smell blessed. Say, you are blessed. Say, you are blessed. Slout it again. Say, you are blessed. In Jesus' name. Then tell yourself, I am blessed. I'm moving in the consciousness of the blessing in Jesus name let's make our declaration one two three go I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus I am the redeemed of the Lord I'm the beloved of Abba all my sins are forgiven I'm passionately loved by God I'm powerfully helped by God I am kept and protected by God I enjoy angelic assistance I am irrevocably blessed. I am eternally forgiven. I am the healed of the Lord. I enjoy divine health. I have the favor and the wisdom of God. I am fruitful. I flourish, excel, and prosper in all that I do. I have the multipliers anointed. Nothing is against me. Nothing dies in my hands. I am never stranded. The supernatural is natural to me. All things are working together for my good. God loves me more than the devil hates me. And grace is... What do you shout here now? Let's, let's share the grace and fellowship at the count of three. One, two, three, go. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is the love of God and the communion of the Spirit, is with us now and forevermore. Hey, point your prophetic index finger at your neighbor and say, Surely, God's goodness and mercies are following you all the long days of your life and you are the dwelling of the Lord forever and ever amen it's your boy Dr. Flourish Peters from the Logic Nation never forget God loves you more than the devil hates you have a flourishing and blessed week ahead of you with great grace much more I love you blessings thank you <laughs>